Welcome back to Bombastic Nation and Ting and Ting and Ting. Back with some more vibes for all of you. Wait, you know, it's kind of chilly up in here. So, oh man. And the hat I wanted to wear is not this. So I'm going to go grandpa style. <laughs> I'm going to put on a fedora. Ah, warmth. <laughs> anyway, people, we're going to Bulgaria. This one is Geography Now Bulgaria. Yes, I. And uh, I'm getting all the suggestions of videos to react to. I keep sending them. I'm going to try to get to them. Like I said, uh, you know, I work. I work at the grocery store. Ooh, tedious craziness. Ooh, you know what I mean? But. I'll get to them all and thing, you know what I mean? Thank you guys for subscribing. Who is already subscribed? Thanks for all the comments. Whoo, those uh, raspberry uh, figs are getting to me. But thanks for all the comments and stuff like that. I answer as much as I can. You know what I mean and thing? I get up like what? Five in the morning to get ready to go to work. You know what I mean? And this is my relaxation time, you know what I mean? So everything else is, you know, extra stuff I have to do, which is fine. I man like doing it. I like talking to everybody, especially when we all cordial with each other and we want to get to know each other and stuff like that, you know what I mean? That's the kind of vibe I'm looking for. I'm not looking for the angst and the controversy and the arguing. No, let's chill. Let's, let's, let's talk to each other. Let's vibe up and take, you know what I mean? Hey, I'm from the islands. It's all cool runnings. It's all cool runnings. Now, I'm going to do more island countries and I'm, I'm, I'm going to do more African countries and stuff like that. All the Africans on there, suggest to me what other African nations you want me to do. You understand what I say and think? Because, you know, no matter where you come from, as long as you're a black man, you're African, right? According to Peter Tosh. Look it up. <laughs> anyway, this one is called Geography Now Bulgaria. Let's bust it up and thing, you know? Let's do this bombocloth thing, yeah. Let's YouTube and Sim Sima. Bulgaria, Bulgaria, Bulgaria. Where have I heard that before? Oh yeah, Victor Crumb from the Harry Potter books. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, now you want to watch this episode, right? It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie. I'd like to take this moment to coin a term, tripster. A tripster is a travel hipster. Someone who is so over the mainstream tourist destinations and they only prefer to go to the bleakest, most obscure regions of the planet. That being said, tripsters watching this video take notes. Also, let's dissect the flag. <laughs> The flag is a tricolor consisting of three equally sized horizontal bands, white, green, and red. When it comes to symbolism, even Bulgarians themselves aren't 100% sure exactly what each band means. However, it's generally accepted that they are inspired by the pan-slav nationalist movement colors. However, it's also kind of accepted that these are the definitions. The white represents love and peace and freedom and spirituality. The green represents the youthfulness as a new liberated state, agriculture, character, and the beauty of nature. And the red represents the valor and once again, the blood spilled of those who fought for the country and for the heroes of Bulgaria. Okay, that was kind of easy. Moving on. <laughs> Very few people actually know where Bulgaria is on a map, but when you look at it, you'll kind of realize that its position is kind of important to the entire continent of Europe. First of all, Bulgaria is located on the eastern part of the Balkan Peninsula, bordered by five other countries and the Black Sea to the east. Since Bulgaria is Europe's closest point to Turkey, it's kind of seen as like the crossroads between Europe and Asia. The capital is Sofia, located in the west, and the country is divided into 28 provinces, and the capital Sofia acts as its own province as well. You, you don't think that those are so close together. You, you know what I mean? The world is such, such a vast place that you don't think that... You know they have to meet somewhere, but you don't sort of fathom the idea that they meet at a certain spot. You know what I'm saying? Am I making sense? That's just an idea I had when I was a kid. You know what I mean? They seem to make it so separate that it doesn't seem like certain places have borders that touch each other. I guess that's what I'm trying to see. But that's a, that's a kid thing, you know. And you, later on, you understand, you know, and a lot of the stuff I talk about 
this sort of stuff is coming from my from a sort of kids uh, eye view you know what i mean certain parts of what i see there well sofia has a wonderfully unique ambiance as a city that still retains its residue shavings from the former soviet identity but with a modern westernized democratic appeal that exudes through the billboards and media about 80 percent of the border with romania rests on the mighty danube river and the borders with serbia macedonia or the former yugoslav republic of macedonia and greece rest on the mountains and hills like the balkan range the Piran range and the Rodopes range bulgaria is very lucky because in addition to having a nice geological mountainous shell to encapsulate the eastern side they have a wonderful black sea to the east which has played a heavily influential role in the development of the bulgarian nation the coast is classified as a humid subtropical climate zone with an abundance of pristine golden beaches the most popular Ooh, ones off the subtropical. coast of Varna and burgas in the black sea bulgaria owns five small islands and islands i'm from the tropical tropics i'm from tropical area i would like to visit a subtropical area i guess it's probably a little bit cooler there or something each named after a saint and each with a unique charm and backstory. For example, St. Thomas Island is one of the only places in all of Bulgaria where cacti grow. St. Oh. Ivan Island, which supposedly has the remains of John the Baptist from the Bible. And St. Anastasia Island, which had a jail that prisoners escaped from long ago. Bulgaria's land comprises of a lot of history, to say the very least. In the south, by the Gorna Krepos, you have the Pemperikon, the Thracian city ruins of the strange ancient culture of the Thracians. In Kazanluk, you have the Thracian tomb of Kazanlak. Yeah, the ancient culture of Thrace had kind of a lot to do with this area. Nobody quite exactly knows what the downfall of the Thracians were, but reading into historical accounts on how they acted on a regular basis, it's not that hard to speculate on a few probable theories. We're sociopaths. Yes, you are, Thrace. Yes, you are. Now, of course, the monuments tell a funny story, but the natural land formations get even crazier. Let's see them. The Bulgarians have a saying, when God divided up the nations amongst the people, the Bulgarians were late, so instead God gave them a piece of heaven. Now whether or not you agree or disagree with that, you can't deny the fact that Bulgaria does have some pretty nice grounds. First of all, the country is divided into two general topographical areas. The mountainous east with the Balkan, Rila, and Rodopes ranges, and the low-lying flatter Danube Valley and the Gornotrakiska lowlands, in which multiple rivers and lakes can be found, in addition to the majority of agriculture plots and grazeland for livestock. Speaking of which, if there's one thing that Pretty. Bulgarians are proud of, and I'm not even joking, every single Bulgarian I talked to has mentioned this, it would be their unique yogurt. Now, a lot of countries make great yogurt, and people will tell you that the Balkans was actually the birthplace of yogurt. However, Bulgaria is the only place in the world where the yogurt is fermented with the Lactobacillus bulgaricus culture that is only found in the air of Bulgaria. This bacterium gives the yogurt a distinct twang and flavor unlike any other yogurt, and with the milk coming from cows or sheep that typically graze off of high herb-rich pastures, enriching the product with even more health benefits. You come to Bulgaria, we don't mess with our dairy products. You buy it, you buy it. Of course, you also have the Black Sea, which Bulgaria has been dependent on for centuries for trade and business, but also has been capitalizing on for tourism. Many Europeans consider the Black Sea coast as kind of like their secret getaway spot that nobody really knows about because everybody's so concerned about thinking that Barcelona and Nice are the only places that you can go to. Ugh, Valencia, I've been so over that for years. I prefer Bordeaux. <laughs> Dude, Dude, you're, you're, now, you're just cool silly. Thing. Because of natural borders by mountains, in conjunction with wind and weather patterns and water flow, Bulgaria is home to a wide variety of entertainingly strange natural landmarks, such as the Belogradchik eroded rock cliffs, the stone mushrooms of Beli Plas, oh, wow. the Pukti Kamani stones. Also keep in mind the Pukti Kamani area, in addition to the Tabernas region of Spain, is one of the only two naturally occurring deserts in all of Europe. And then we get to something that Bulgaria is definitely not in short supply of, caves and waterfalls. We reach places like the Devil's Throat Cave with the world's highest underground waterfall, the Devatashka Cave with holes in its ceiling, the Eyes of God cave in Prohodna. In fact, Bulgaria has over 4,500 charted caves in its entire country. Also, keep in mind, 32 of the 37 species of bats in Europe call Bulgaria home. So oh. if there's one thing you can take away from this, it's that Bulgaria is a very cavey place. Waterfalls also speckle the landscape, mostly in the eastern mountainous regions. The tallest one in the Balkans being the Resko Praskalo, the picturesque Krushuna Falls, and the town with the most fortunate fairy tale view, Vrasa, which has the Skaklia, a waterfall looming above the 
their skyline on the mountain, ever wow. flowing from the cliffs adjacent to the direct. Wake up every morning and town. look oh, up at the waterfall. So I just can't even. I'm not long. Now, if you ask Bulgarians, one more thing that they'll tell you that they're proud of is their roses. Roses are cultivated all across the entire country, but most heavily in the Rose Valley, just below the Balkan mountain range. Bulgaria produces over 70% of the world's rose oil, a substance used by pressing on the petals and also most commonly used in perfumery. They have so many roses that typically the abundance allows them to have rose festivals in which they parade oh. <laughs> around with roses, have a rose. I'm a rose kind of guy, you know what I mean? And, and, and there's, a, there's a sentimental thing with that. Uh, my mom planted rose bushes around the house on the island. And at night, we would sit out there in the tropical air and, the, and you could smell the roses as we sit out there. She had so many roses planted there. So I, I wouldn't mind going to check out all the rose plants and stuff. I don't want to go to the where they make the oil. So I just want to see the roses and smell the roses. Kind of cliche, isn't it? Smell the roses. <laughs> Queen Beauty Contest, and they kind of just end up dancing around Ooh, and beauty roses contest. all over the place. Kind of like the La Tomatina Festival in Spain, except it's a lot cleaner and more better smelling. Wow, that's the second time we've contrasted Bulgaria with Spain. Let's see if there's any more parallels in. Now, Bulgarians may be Slavic, well, kind of, we'll explain more about that in a bit, but they definitely have their own Bulgarian way of doing things. Bulgaria has a population of about 7.5 million people, most of whom identify as ethnically Bulgarian, at about 85%. 9% of the population being Turks, about 5% are Roma, commonly referred to as gypsies, making Bulgaria the country with the third highest gypsy population, and the remainder of the country coming from other nationalities. Now, here's the sad thing. Since the fall of the Soviet Union, Bulgaria has one of the highest population declines in the world. They used to have around 9 million people back in 1990, but since then, the emigration and death rate has surged past the population growth rate, and since then, Bulgaria has seen a rather alarming population decline in the past few decades. This all had to do partially with company privatization and the social structure investments going completely out of whack after independence from the former Soviet Union. Statistics project that about 60,000 people leave Bulgaria every year, and wow. in 2012, 24 towns were completely wiped off the map as they were completely abandoned, and about 170 towns are on the verge of extinction. The good news, though, is that this makes Bulgaria one of the perfect places for cheap shopping, real estate, business, and cheap vacation getaways. In fact, since recently joining the EU and NATO, which has, by the way, caused a lot of controversy, Bulgaria has seen a completely unprecedented... Seeing what's happening there, the migration. That's why... Things going to change. You, you, you can't stop it. People going to leave areas. And you know, like probably about 50 or so years from now, yeah, I hate to put it this way, but if we're still here, people going to move back there. Somebody's going to move in there. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just changes. This is what happens with history, you know? level of tourism and business booming. Yeah, economic nerds. Bulgaria is the kind of place where you might want to consider pulling a Warren Buffett. I'm just saying. Ethnic Bulgarian people will tell you that they have roots from the Bulgar tribes, which nomadically came from the eastern regions of Eurasia, as far speculated as the Central Asian regions, until they eventually settled down into what is now known as modern Ukraine. Eventually, they came down and mixed in with the Slavs and formed Bulgaria. So, technically, a lot of people in Bulgaria could have Central Asian roots, and considering how far the Huns extended their reaches, that's not completely out of the question. Culture-wise, Bulgaria is proud to proclaim itself as the birthplace of the Cyrillic alphabet, used by over 250 million people in Eastern Europe and Central Asia, extending as far as Mongolia. Oh, and one more thing, just like we talked about in an earlier video, like some regions in Albania, Bulgaria is one of the only few places in the world where people shake their head to say yes and nod their heads to say no. Now let's talk about the people Bulgaria interacts with. Now, Bulgaria has one of the most anomalous core of companions that you would never really expect them to engage with comfortably. First off, the strange thing is, in 2004, in addition to other former Soviet states, Bulgaria took a bold step and joined NATO and three years later joined the EU. This was kind of a big deal considering the Soviet-linked past and the ties that Bulgaria was rooted in. This move also opened up Bulgaria's diplomacy to unparalleled standards that they never really had before. All this kind of puts Bulgaria in a very unique, intercessory class status when it comes to East versus West. Typically, Bulgaria will kind of 
act as like a mediator for the EU and NATO when it comes to cross-operational engagements. When it comes to the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, commonly referred to as just Macedonia, Bulgaria has a strange relationship. By all means, these two countries speak the same language and have pretty similar backgrounds as Slavic nations. The problem is where things went down about 80 years ago. Basically, this is what Bulgaria says. Look, Macedonia, we want to love you guys. You're basically just Bulgarian, but you've been brainwashed by Georgi Pilevsky into thinking you have some kind of indigenous Hellenistic roots. You don't. You're Bulgarians. Just accept it. To which the Macedonians say, Shut up, Bulgaria! You don't know us! Okay, we are descended from Alexander the Great. You belong to Macedonia. <laughs> I don't want to say it's kind of like the North-South Korea thing because it's nowhere near that level of animosity, but in a fundamental sense, ideologically, it is kind of like the North-South Korea thing. They generally do not favor Turkey that much because for 500 years they were under the Ottoman Empire yeah. and they pretty much hated every second of it. It wasn't until the 19th century when they finally gained their independence with the help of the Russians fighting alongside with them. This means that Russia is kind of seen as like the brother friend of Bulgaria. Even though in every aligned organizational sense they kind of took every step away from Russia and even though they were kind of taken over by the Soviets for a long time, tensions are low and they still get along great. However, Romania is kind of seen as like the new boyfriend friend that Bulgaria just started dating. Especially after joining the EU, relations grew fast, the presidents regularly visit each other and hang out, business is great, ferries and bridges connect the two countries across the Danube, where people love to visit each other, and Romanian-Bulgarian marriages are not uncommon. In conclusion, wax your mustaches and put on your skinny jeans, because if you are so over the mainstream, you might want to just stop by and smell the roses. Stay tuned, Burkina Faso is coming up. Yeah, you know, Bulgaria... To me, growing up and reading about it and hearing about it, that whole region there has a, a, a sense of mysticism. You know what I mean? But I think it's because of the idea that it's always dark and rainy there. You know what I mean? It's just, ooh, I'd like to go just see that because, like I said, I like dark and rainy. Not all the time. I like all seasons. Except winter, I don't want to live in it. I want to visit it, but I don't want to live it. But I'm living in it right now. It's kind of chilly out here, yeah, you know what I mean? This tropical boy here is freezing. Uh, not really, but when I walk out to go to work in the morning, I'm freezing. But anyway, I'm going to put a link to this video in the description. Go check them out. Check out this channel. This channel's got some primo stuff for you to watch, you know what I mean? In the meantime, take care of each other, all right? Cool runnings. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Keep watching. Keep watching.